Hello again, everyone. Uh, it's Tuesday, uh, January um, 16th, 2018, and uh, so far this morning, uh, there has been no further word of whether the Mrongbong Band will be going to South Korea for the Olympics or not. We don't know. The uh, Samjin Orchestra apparently will be going to uh, the Olympics. Uh, there's 140 members. And right now they're discussing whether they walk across the border or whether they take a bus or a train, uh, the logistics, what happens, they don't know. But apparently the Samjin Orchestra is going. Um, so I thought it might be, while we're waiting for word one way or another on the Mrongbong Band, I thought it might be interesting to look, uh, take a brief look at uh, Hyung Song Wool. She's the uh, director of um, the Mrongbong Band. Apparently she's in charge. And uh, she's leading the delegation from uh, North Korea to the talks uh, at, uh, uh, with South Korea on what's going to happen. So um, she's actually the ranking member. She has the, uh, the most power and authority of the group. Uh, but she's going as a delegate. So here she is at the table. She's sitting down at the end, uh, not directly across from uh, the main participants on the uh, South Korean side. Uh, interesting, she's an interesting person. Uh, you're finding in the media, the South Korean media, there's, they mention her name a lot. But of course they're not going to say anything favorable about her. And they're always bringing up the past, which I'll get into in a moment here. But uh, they mention her name a lot, and, and why not? She's an extraordinarily beautiful woman. I mean, she really is something to say. And I don't think that South Koreans have seen um, a woman quite like her from the North. They don't, they don't know what to, at least that's the feeling I get. Could be wrong. Um, but she's captured a lot of attention. And, um, and you may remember her, people that follow North Korea re may remember Hyun Sung Wo from her uh, video back in uh, 2005 when she had that, uh, that pop tune in uh, North Korea, uh, Girl in the Saddle of a Steed. The South Korean media, they twisted it around real maliciously and they made it the title um, Excellent Horse-Like Lady. And that got into the Western media and the Western media kept saying, well, the song is Excellent Horse-Like Lady. No, it's not, it's Girl in the Saddle of a Steed. And the song was about a, a young lady working in the uh, Kim Jong-un uh, silk mill there and she's uh, working on the machinery and she's running around and she's taking bolts of fabric and installing uh, big spools of thread onto the machines and she's working hard and she's working so hard that she made Employee of the Month. And that's what the whole song was about. And, uh, and then later she said kind of in the song that she, the reason why she worked so hard was she felt that uh, Kim Il-sung had reached down and picked her up and put her on the back of the Chalima, the flying horse. And so that's where a girl from the, in the Saddle of a Steed comes from. She was on the Chalima horse and uh, working hard. So there you go. Uh, and uh, so that <laughs> gives you an idea there. What's... Anyway, uh, in August 2013, an article came out in Cholson Ilbo and elsewhere, and it was really picked up all around. It got into the media and went crazy. And um, it, uh, uh, it was on August 29th. I have the original article here. And August 29th, and uh, let me just read it to you. I'll read you parts of it uh, regarding Hyung Sang Wo. Um, Kim Jong Un's ex girlfriend, it was never established that they had any kind of a romantic relationship. That was just South Korea's thing. You know, there's some kind of a rumor, and so they put him as his ex girlfriend. And forever after, Hyung Sang Wo is. Kim, uh, Kim Jong-un's ex-girlfriend. There you go. Uh, Kim Jong-un's ex-girlfriend was among a dozen well-known North Korean performers who were per uh, executed by firing squad on August 20th, reports said Wednesday. Now this whole article is full of reports or sources say or whatever, which I mean when you read this something like that and you, and you got something this important and the sources, you know, it, there's no attribution 
then you can be pretty sure they pulled this out of their ass. And in this case of this article, uh, South Korean media did pull it out of their ass because it's all fake, 100% fake. Let me read it to you. Sources in China, again, uh, said singer Hyung Sung Wool, as well as uh, Moon Kyung Jin, head of the Unhasu Orchestra, was arrested on August 17th for violating North Korean laws against pornography and were executed in public three days later. Okay. Uh, the victims of the atrocity were members of the Unhasu Orchestra as well as singers, musicians, and dancers with the Wang Jason Light Music Band. Uh, they were accused of videotaping themselves having sex and selling the videos. The tapes have apparently gone on sale in China as well, apparently. You know, again, fake. Uh, a source said uh, some allegedly had Bibles. And this is where the big alarm bells. I mean, if you haven't, if you haven't identified this as garbage by now, when they put Bibles in with pornography, you know, the people had were making uh, porno tapes, they also had Bibles. Now, that's just stupid. <laughs> it just doesn't go together. But South Korean media, they put it. That's the way they did it. Uh, so, Hyang Sung Woo had a Bible. She's making tapes of herself having sex, and um, so on and so forth. They were executed with machine guns while... The key members of the Unhasu Orchestra, Wang Jason Light Band, and the Morongbong Band, uh, as well as the families of the victims, looked on. In other words, these people were forced to watch. And again, that's the other big fail. You know, can you imagine the members of the Morongbong Band being forced to look at people being machine guns to death? I mean, they go into hysterics. They'd have mental breakdowns. You know, they couldn't perform anymore. This was in 2013, August 2013. These girls would be incapacitated. You know, I mean, I would be, you know, I'd lose my appetite for probably a week. You know, and I'm a tough guy. I've seen people machine gun like that. I'm going, ah, you know, I, I'm not hungry, sorry. You know, probably might even barf seeing this stuff. But these girls, you know, come on. Um... The source added later that all the families of the executed uh, appear to have appear to have been sent to prison camps under North Korea's barbaric principle of guilt by association. Uh, Hyun uh, was a singer with the Pachamba Electric Ensemble. Yada yada yada. A source said Kim Jong Un has been viciously eliminating anyone who he deemed a challenge to his authority. The executions show that he is fixated on consolidating his leadership. Now, how was Hyang Song Wool a challenge to Kim Jong-un's authority? She's supposed to be his ex-girlfriend. And suddenly she's challenging his authority? You know, and he has some, Kim Jong-un has to machine gun a bunch of uh, singers, musicians, and dancers in order to consolidate uh, uh, his leadership? You know, it's stupid. So when this came out, I, I, I went ballistic. I said, you know, that's, that's nonsense. And I got a lot of grief for it. You know, I left all kinds of remarks on YouTube and on various other online publications saying this was just all fake news. And I got a lot of grief for that. Uh, South Korea put up a, uh, I think it was South Korea that put up this image of uh, there's Kim Jong-un, he's firing a pistol. He was actually giving, uh, 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 showing soldiers how to shoot a pistol at some sort of military unit out in the field. But they put that picture in with these girls being apparently mock executed or whatever, that South Korea put up these girls in front of stakes and then uh, Kim Jong-un. And this got all in the media and everybody believed this. And I was probably one of the very few people that said, no, it's fake. And it's tough, you know, for somebody like me to go on you know, YouTube and put down my opinion and say, no, this is all fake news. When everybody believes the lie. And so everybody was saying, oh, yeah, well, you're right. And everybody else is wrong. Well, yeah, I'm right. And a million people are wrong. 
which is true. Uh, the reason, one reason why I knew it was fake was uh, back in um, uh, March of 2012, uh, Hyun Song Wall, she was uh, attending some sort of a musical thing, um, some sort of an event. There was an orchestra, and they called her up out of the uh, crowd to sing Girl in the Saddle of a Steed. And of course, she wasn't prepared. <laughs> You know, she came up and she's a little flustered. I wish I could, I had the video. They took it down and I didn't, like a dummy, I didn't copy it. So now, I mean, I can only remember it. And uh, I wish they'd put it back up again because it's wonderful. Uh, here's a picture of her. She's, you know, sitting up there singing. And then here's a, a close-up of her face. And you look at this beautiful woman. You know, unadorned, she doesn't even have hardly makeup on. Her hair is kind of skewed, and she's just, and she's singing. And ask yourself, is this a woman that's going to make porno tapes? No. And I saw this a year. This is in uh, uh, March of 2012, and they came out with this nonsensical story in August of 2013. And she was pregnant, obviously. So. When supposedly she was machine gunned to death, she had a year old baby, or maybe probably around a year or so. She's a mother at home with her child. Yeah. How can she be a, 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 a challenge to Kim Jong un's authority? Yeah. I mean, it's just, and this gives you an idea right here how malicious uh, certain elements of South Korean media can be. I mean, they're just flat evil people. I mean, this is only one small example. This might be the most well-known, but I can trot out a dozen of these things. And they keep attacking North Korea, and it's all bullshit. Uh, so anyway, she came out in, um, in 2014. Um, this was in uh, May of 2014 at the National Convention of Artists. And here she is, she's giving a speech. And she's a colonel. She's a senior colonel in the KPA. <laughs> And so she made the speech and uh, some of that. And what surprised me is that North Korea didn't come out immediately in August of 2013 and bring her out and say, look, you know, here she is. You know, this is, a, this is a, uh, an attack on the dignity of our supreme leader. He didn't machine gun anybody. Another reason I knew it was nonsense was because Kim Jong-un in 2012 and 2013, uh, especially, and, and, and he still does it, but really the first couple of years, he really busted his tail uh, getting out there among the people. I mean, he just, he, you know, boots on the ground. He'd go everywhere, talk to people. And he's hugging old ladies. He's uh, talking to soldiers. These women soldiers love him. Uh, he's in orphanages with babies. He's like just acting like a typical politician. And if you look at the interaction, and I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of hours of interaction with Kim Jong-un and people, there's no fear. The people aren't afraid of the guy. They love him. Every time he shows up, they're like really happy. It's like Elvis Presley or Frank Sinatra shows up. They go berserk. You know, the wonderful guy. So if he had been machine gunning people, you wouldn't see this. You wouldn't see these people, you know, running, running towards them and smiling and laughing. And it's just, you wouldn't see it. But, so that's another reason why I knew it was fake. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of wrap it all up by saying, can you imagine what's going on, uh, going on in Hyung Sung Wall's head? when she goes down there to talk to these people and to try to negotiate, you know, this, these peace feelers, trying to get something going between uh, the reconciliation between the two nations, two countries, the reunification, because that's what she's there, North Korea is all about. And of course, she's a loyal soldier. Again, a senior colonel, one notch below a general. So she has her marching order. She has to go down there and be nice and smile, be beautiful. But what is she thinking? She says, you know, she's sitting across the table with these people and going, you know, these are the people that wounded me dead, that lied about me. And she has to look them in the eye. And let me tell you, she has more courage than I do because I, I flat wouldn't do it. Of course, you know, if I was a soldier, I'd have to. 
oh man, I'd want an apology first. You know, apologize to me for what you said about me. Of course, South Korea is not going to. There's, that's not going to happen. Um, they can be really, really, really ruthless. So, uh, you know, I don't know what's, uh, you know, what, but, you know, I, I do feel sorry for her. She's like, wow, that must be tough. Such a beautiful woman. And she's going down there and smiling. And, oh, man, it's got to be, you know, it, I don't know. I just, it astounds me. Anyway, I just wanted to leave you with that, and um, and we'll see what happens with the Morong Bong Band. I don't know. I'm right now on 50-50. Uh, if they've got the uh, Samjin Orchestra down there, uh, they might not send the Morong Bong Band. Um, North Korea wants their 12 women back, the 12 women that were supposedly uh, captured or shanghaied from that restaurant in China. Uh, there was the 12 women who worked there, and somehow they were talked into or coerced or kidnapped or whatever and taken to South Korea, and nobody's ever heard anything about them since. And North Korea is right now, they're saying, look, give us the 12 young women back. We want our 12 young women back. And then South Korea says, no, 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 they're defectors. They defected of their own free will. North Korea says, okay, then let us talk to them, find out if that's true. South Korea says, no, no, no. So, I mean, North Korea doesn't know whether these 12 young women are dead or alive, whether they're in prison, you know, what's going on with them. So maybe that's this one of the sticking points, you know, no Morong Bong band without the 12 young women. I don't know. But uh, South Korea is sticking to their guns. No, you're not getting them back. You know, and you have to ask yourself, why do you want to be like that? No, come on. And, and the families back in North Korea, these 12 young women, and they're wondering, you know, what happened to our daughters, our sisters? You know, what's going on? So uh, that's a sticking point. That's, you know, might be a sticking point, and uh, that might be the hang up where, okay, no wrong bong band. So, but we'll see. You don't know. You got to give uh, North Korea credit for trying. Uh, because they're the ones that initiated this, not South Korea, in Kim Jong-un's uh, New Year's address. You know. And then uh, the president of South Korea, Moon Jae-in, he, he blamed it all off on Trump. He said, well, this would have never happened without Trump. Trump pushing North Korea, threatening them, and North Korea comes to the table. But, you know, you're, you're, uh, Moon Jae-in is very careful not to take credit for any of this. He said, well, it's all, you know, this is kind of a dumped in our lap. But anyway, uh, you know, I hate to get too much into politics, but that's probably as far as I'll get. But anyway, I'll leave it at that, and we'll wait for news of the Morong Bong Band. And uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.